my name is Kelly and today I'm going to be reviewing Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas. If you don't know about this book, it's the third book in the Throne of Glass series and it is not the last one. For you people that haven't read it, I don't even know what to say without spoiling you. Like completely. These books they keep making their way up on my favorite list and I think this book is like number two or three up there because like the characters in the world it just makes it so amazing. Before you watch any of the rest of this video you should go read Air Fire and the other two books because you're not going to want to be spoiled at all. I'm just going to spend the rest of this talking about it and the parts that I really liked and the parts that I didn't so oh my gosh I don't even know where to begin. I really liked the Selena chapters. I liked learning about the different country and the different people there and what she was going through. Other characters they intrigued me but not as much as they probably should have. So I was really worried for Selena at first because she wasn't finding Maeve. She wasn't following up the king's orders and she was just losing herself even more and I was really scared for her because I'm like what? So when she finally met Rowan and met Maeve and then they started their training, like, oh, okay, okay, cool. But I was like, wait, what about the king's plan still? I don't know. I just thought that was important for some reason. But then as the book goes on and their training goes on, you kind of realize she's not going back the same person as when who she was when she left and king's orders don't matter anymore. So I was glad that she actually didn't get in to it with the royal family at all. They didn't even like know she was there and I was like, oh, okay, good. Rowan, he is probably my favorite character now other than Selena because he's so great. I liked how he, he's a fae and he's like immortal and he's kind of like mysterious and like totally standoffish. And then once you get to know him and stuff, he's really sweet and I just want to like hug him. Their training, I can't even describe all the things that I loved about it because Lena learned it and then she like got set back and then she had to like learn something else to like keep going and I think really good for her. I mean like obviously by the end of this book she's like, yeah. I'm Aelin? I don't know, that's how I've been pronouncing it, Aelin. Another part about Selena's chapters is the murders and how they had to figure out that thing with Narok and Balag princes. And I thought that was really cool how her training wasn't about just that, it was about learning more about the plot and the problem to keep it going for the next book. By the end of this book, Rowan, you learn a, a lot about him, about his mate, and about kind of what happens to him and his blood oath with Maeve. All that makes sense of like who he is now and it's just kind of sad and you kind of feel sorry for him. I was glad that he broke his oath with Maeve, that Selena did that for him, but then I was kind of sad that he made an oath to Selena because I'm like, why? Kate, don't you just want to be free? Why? It makes me wonder if they can have more than one mate because their lifetime is so long and as long as that first one is there, I think they'd be fine. But I just wonder what happened if they'd meet another really good person. I don't think Rowan will ever be over his mate. I'm not trying to push that on him or anything, but Selena and him are like perfect, I think. I know. I really liked Chal in the past, but Selena's good by herself too, she's fine. I don't know, this book isn't about relationships, but I claim you to whatever end. Ugh. Now about Chal. Hmm, I liked him where it left off in the last book, in Crowd of Midnight. I liked how they were kind of like parting on good terms. When I read his chapters, I started liking him less and less and less until like the very end, because Edion? I don't know, that's how I say his name. He came in and Chal just like spilled all the things Selena told him like in two seconds and now he's gonna die but he told him a lot and then he like kept telling him things and I was like, Chal, that's... hmm. Because I didn't like Edion at first either. I still don't really like him that much. Except those last couple chapters were so intense, I just had to like love everyone. Falling in love with everyone just gets your heart killed. Because when I look back on Charles' storyline, all I think of is when Doran totally slammed him in that one chapter about 
him saying that he only likes bits and parts of people and he doesn't really like all of them for who they are and I was like yes well hopefully Chal is better in the next book I, I bet he's gonna be but I don't know he just wasn't my favorite in this one. I'm glad that he's moving away from the king though. He needs to know that his loyalties aren't there and I know he's like oh I'm always loyal to Dorib and stuff but no you're not. About Adion, I don't know. I liked him because he said that he felt weird about the ring so that's why he got rid of it right away and like made a fake one and I thought that was really funny. There's just something about him that feels weird, I don't know. I see people on Tumblr, him and Selena like together, and I'm like, they're cousins? No. And I know they might be like distant cousins, but I still don't like it. And I think it's nice that he wants his queen back and he'll like do anything to have her back. It was really nice how he was trying to get a court together for her and stood up for Chal and Doran at the very end, and I thought that was all really good. I think I didn't like reading the Chal and Adion chapters so much is because I just wanted to read more about Selena. And I know that sounds horrible, but she's all I care about. Doran in this book was really interesting. He found someone to love, and I thought that was really cute. Him and Sorsha, right when she was introduced, I'm like, she's gonna be a part of this because why would you just introduce someone to like not have them later so I really liked their relationship and how Dorn could like move on I guess and I know he was like a player in the past and then settle down with one girl that was really cute and how Chala he was like a healer would be a good queen for this country and I was like yeah cool. Those last chapters though they just killed me because it all happened so fast and I was like reading it and I was like what is going on? Everything was just falling apart. I feel bad for Sorsha because she had a tough life and all she wanted to do was get away from it and stuff and of course she like falls in love with the prince and it's like kind of what are you expecting but then it's kind of like it sucks. So of course the king found out about that and he killed her. It was actually really sad and I was actually really shocked but at least she stood up for herself before that and made a stand and said what she had to because I was like, you go girl, yes. And then Doran went to magic. I thought it would be really interesting with the two of them too, how they were like doing their own problems because they're finding out a thing to hold Doran's magic back. And I was like, oh cool. And so they kind of did. He went totally crazy in his like dad's office and he was like shaking the whole castle because that's what Charles said. His dad and then the darkness and I'm so worried about him. I know how hard it was for Selena to pull herself out of the darkness. I'm just hoping that Doran's okay. Oh my gosh, okay. I don't know what it is with these certain kinds of people, but people like Doran who still have magic after it's been like away. The king captures them and he like uses their magic to like turn it dark. That's what he's been doing I think. He's been capturing magic people and turning them into monsters. And I really don't want anything to happen to Doran because he's probably one of my favorite characters. Manon Blackbeak. That girl. That witch. Okay, let's talk about her. She's so tough. I really like how Sarah J Maas puts perspectives in that you normally wouldn't see if it was in a first person point of view or sometimes even in a third person point of view. Like in Crowd of Midnight you got that slave girl chapter and you got to hear about that in this book and it's just nice to know what else is going on in the world. So I really loved the Manon chapters because one, you got to learn about a whole different race and whole different problems and all these new people and her storyline was really weird too. I thought the war games were really weird. I was like, why? Was like games don't seem like a witch kind of thing, but okay. So it was about her training for that and getting a wavern, a dragon, a, a creature have. I really, I was really going there that she was gonna get Titus for hers, but then that, that was a really big twist that I wasn't expecting, so I appreciate that a lot. Aberox, he's cool and seems smart, and I don't think he's ever gonna start talking, but it's cool that they can, like, have that connection to understand each other, and I 
thought even in this one book and a few chapters of Manon you could see her like progress and grow up kind of and she said oh I don't I don't have a heart but then she saved that other witch I hope she's in the next book too because the king just couldn't give him all that stuff and then just say here's your land back he has to like use them to fight against Selena maybe I have no idea how that's gonna happen and that final battle is gonna be so crazy and in this book we got to learn more about Selena's past and I feel like we're always learning more about her like who her family is, what happened to them. Another reason I don't like Eddie on I think that much is because I feel like he just came out of nowhere. He was just brought up and they're like, oh, they're really close and stuff. And I was like, well, he was never brought up before. I don't see why that matters now, you know? And what I loved about her going to Wendland is you get to learn more about the whole world in general and how the people there are like and how you think, oh, that nation is like so great for the Thay, but it's actually really segregated and Maeve is not the queen that I thought she would be at all. So that was kind of disappointing, but the demi fay that she got to meet at the fourth thing, the border, was really cool. They were really nice. It was nice to see Selena's powers because we never really got that in the other books. And like this book, I was so excited for her to learn how like to use them and control them and for her shifting and stuff. It just makes me worry about her in the next book, how she's going to go back to a darling and not have it anymore. I wonder if she's gonna be powerful enough to use it somehow. How that's just gonna happen because I want more of her magic. I just don't want it to be in that one book and it's like, oh, it's over, you know? And I really liked how in this book it showed that the limits of her magic and what happens if she does go too far, like the burnout part. That was really cool and how it showed her recovering from it and then Rowan taking care of her and they were just so- and then how they go for not talking to Dave to him giving her a tattoo and I thought that was really cool. It kind of sucks to have that tattooed on you because it's like a bad thing that happened but then you kind of want to respect it and you kind of want to like let them go by doing that. I think she kind of idolized Nahima too much and made her be this perfect person and once Selena knew or accepted that she lied to her and hurt her and like died it brought her back to being a human and that she can let go of her. I thought that was good too and Selena just learned a lot in this book and she was like growing a lot. I know she doesn't want to be queen but I think she'll be so good at it and she can make Tara say so kick-ass again and I'm so excited for that. So I think that's all that I have for this video. Thank you for watching and if I think of anything else that I left out in this I'll leave it in the doodly do. and if you guys think of anything else that you want to comment on just leave it in the comments. I will see you when I have uh, another video up. Bye!